Okay, so the, we're gonna start. This is the City Council Select Committee to study barriers to serving on city boards and commission, plural. Uh, today is February 14, 2023. This meeting is gonna start at, it's starting now at 7.30 and runs every uh, second and fourth Tuesday of every month at 7.30. Um, we're gonna call the meeting to order, Laura. Roll call. Sure. Javier. Here. Jamila. Here. Susan, as Javier said, not present. Gwen. Here. Garrick. Here. And Cynthia. Here. Um, Javier, you have a quorum. Thank you so much, Laura. Um, <clears throat> as always, we're really intentional at the beginning of each meeting of having a uh, public comment. Uh, today is not gonna be the exception. Um, you know, I'm, I'm gonna do what I do always do. If anybody is watching this uh, afterwards, so if you're watching the recording of this session, um, we meet every uh, second and fourth Tuesday of every month at 7.30, usually 7.30 to nine. And we always have allocated 15 minutes at the beginning of the meeting uh, for public comment. Uh, we have had some successes with that, <clears throat> um, but I think it's, it's important to create, you know, the environment and the space for people to be able to either take it or not. As long as the space is created, it's, it's absolutely fine. So hopefully if so, anybody watches this, uh will know and every member of the community at large is welcome to to pull a comment here or to connect with any member of the uh select committee through email um or to contact the city excellent we're gonna move to the next agenda item which is the approval of minutes from previous meetings. We have, this time we have just one single set of minutes, which is the one from our meeting in January 24th. Uh, is there any kind of comment or amendment that people would like to do, or we can just move forward with the approving of the minutes? Excellent. So I'm looking for a motion to approve the minutes. Motion to approve. I'll second that. Excellent. Cynthia, motion to approve. Gary, seconding the motion. Laura. Javier. Yep. Um, Garrick. Yes. Jamila. Yes. Gwen. I think I need to abstain. And Just yeah. wasn't there, but I'll still get them approved if I abstain. Yeah. Okay. Is Cynthia, was that a yes? I'm sorry, I didn't hear that. Uh, yes. Yeah. Okay. Excellent. Excellent. So we're going <clears> to <throat> move to agenda item number four which is, you know, our general discussion items. And we're always, you know, we tend to take this uh, one by one or we sort of shuffle around. I want to confirm with you, uh, I sent last week two versions of our beautiful survey. Of, uh, one was uh, sort of a compiling of the information on a, on a spreadsheet. And the second version that I sent was a more beautiful one, which is the one on PDF. Come on, it, it is beautiful. After, you know, after I saw the spreadsheet and you have the ID numbers at the beginning, which is like, like, a, like looks almost a matrix, seeing the PDF with the percentages and the, and the bar graph, that's beautiful. <laughs> that's, that's beautiful. So I hope, um, as, as you know, uh, that's going to be the core of the conversation that we're going to have today. Um, so I, I would like to sort of open the floor for, for just general comments. We, we're going to go through um, the, the PDF uh, results. 
for people who are watching, we have gotten so far 115 answers to uh, to the survey, which is uh, over 25% rate of answers compared to the you know the, the 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 complete universe of emails that went sent out. And thanks to Laura for all that work. Um, and I would like to open the floor for comments, thoughts about uh, when you guys uh, take, talk a look to the to the data. Laura. Did you send that to me, Javier? Because I didn't see it. Did you send that out to all of the members? But I, 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 I took one email. I put reply all and I send it like that. It may, I have, may have missed you. And I will okay. send it to you it's, right now. As long as everyone else got it. <laughs> okay, I will send it to you. Any um, reaction to the survey? Well, I um, when I, I did review the minutes earlier from January 24th, but um, I'm definitely in agreement with the fact that it would be great to have a lot more responses um, so that we could really gauge something. Um, and it's a surprisingly small number of people who were who were currently serving who responded um and it's you know when i was reviewing and looking at the responses and everything it looked like a lot of people responded who had who had applied and not heard anything i i, I didn't you know i don't remember exactly the numbers um but i think we're going to talk about that tonight so yes. i'll just let things move along when i have a question for you Yes. Do, you, do you feel that so the, the emails that went out were between 400 and 420, more or less, take, take it or give it, right? And so we're having, as I said, we're having a rate of answer of 25% roughly with 115. Um, I would like to sort of to get you take into that. It, I What I heard you said, it's, that it may not be, you were expecting even better. Yeah, um, you know, it seems like in the life of Northampton, there must be like more people that we could reach out to who have served. And then I feel like it's just persistence. So let me just give you an example. I could have filled out this survey again, a second time personally, um, but the survey got pushed way down into my email and I lost track of it. And when I went to like search for it, I couldn't find it maybe just because I wasn't typing in the right keyword. So I think part of it is persistence. Um, and then part of it is just like helping and supporting people to be able to find that in their email, like just by sending out another one or you know, sometimes like it takes me a few times of people sending things to my email for me to be like, oh yeah, I got to get to that. You know, like I got to get to that. So reminders, yeah. Or just, you know, people are so busy and um, was that your question? Yeah, absolutely. And and I think you, you bring up extremely important point about maybe we just send that out again, saying, for people who have not filled it out, like having sort of in brackets and in capital letters, only for people who have not uh, submitted. So I think that's 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 a great that's a that's a great point because you know it's only you know just recent, so it doesn't require a huge amount of logistical stuff because all the previous work was done at Radio Laura. so right. <laughs> which I'm really grateful for, right. Uh, is that something, Laura, that can be done? Yeah, it wasn't too hard because I send them out in like batches of a hundred. So really, you know, it was just drafting the email and then sending out four. So that what would be done. I wouldn't, I don't think I have a way of knowing this, uh, uh, can't think of the word, uh, distinguishing between people who have responded and who have not. I would just have to send it out to all the people I originally sent it to. Yeah, what I was thinking is maybe uh, 
on the body at the beginning of the body of the the email oh. and on the subject line to say for those who have not answered Definitely. so yeah. if i if i answer and i see the sort of the subject line i said okay i already answered this right, right if i haven't or, okay sorry or if you already answered for one position and you have something else to report like in like in my specific case you know it was like one situation where um you know i had applied and never heard back but in another situation i do also serve on a on a on the partnership so i would i would need to give two different answers or this was kind of my confusion about how we were going to deal with this if people served on multiple um boards and committees we have a few people like that yes yeah, my, my my guess was that the strongest feeling was going to come across so yeah. for example if okay you, if you had just a you know a, a, a sort of uh, middle of the road experience with one and but was other that was no good i think the one that people would tend to focus is the one that was sort of eventful even in a in a negative way right mm -hmm. um laura is that is that, is that possible to send tomorrow before friday uh just a new batch with with a with a one sentence in one bracket saying for those who have not answered sure service? yeah i can definitely do that perfect Excellent. I also think timing is everything. So it's the time that the email lands in the inbox. It's um like when I used to I used to live blog, um, and um, I had a system where you know I know when people are coming home from work and they're going to get on their computer because they're going to chill out and relax, you know, and want to do their reading. Um, there were other times that I. I considered like time zone changes. I had like 10,000 readers, but I had maybe more than that from other countries. So um, it was really imperative, like when I released the information that I sort of had a, a rhythm to that in terms of like when everybody was around and available and their eyes were landing on that new post or that new email in this case, so oh. timing maybe before friday <laughs> or maybe or maybe on maybe on sunday when people are logging in and getting ready to go back to work for the week you know in my case if i even even the emails got i get during the weekend by monday they, they are just buried down so i would yeah. say before friday would be fine okay um we can, i can check with you laura later about that so I, but i think it's a really good idea i i agree and and honestly i i didn't know what we didn't think about it so thank you so much what sure uh, and one more thing i'm sorry yeah. i have a lot to say no, 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 I, missed, no, 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 no. I missed a meeting um just <laughs> looking at the results the results were so compelling um you know like what is this do we have a majority of women who are responding and a minority of men who are not or is it that we have more women serving than men um you know there were some really obvious you know uh you know i would say imbalances um in the results um and so but I did read like all of the narrations and, and all of the narratives. And it's like, there were some things that were over and over again. And it's, it's funny because some people are like, we just want to come back in person. You know, this doesn't work. Another important thing that I heard was parking. You know, that for me is a pain in the neck. Um, parking, people who might have mobility issues. It's easier for them to attend online. And then there are some barriers to people coming online. And so, you know, it's kind of like, I guess we did just have to, uh, you know, I mean, we're starting to, to think, the city is starting to think about, you know, having the hybrids, having the hybrids. Um, and so I think that it's important and I, I don't think it would be something that we should let go of is, I mean, you know, it's, totally obvious that, you know, having meetings online really made things accessible for people throughout the COVID. And that was a good thing. Yeah, I, 
I, I have to say, I have uh, two weeks ago, I had a really good meeting about that with uh, City Council Chair Nash and uh, by, by President and Vice President uh, Foster about that. In, it, but this is sort of a difference between how the open meeting law affects committee members versus how it affects elect elected officials, right? So we are in a position as a city to talk about keeping accessibility for committee members who are not part are not affected by open meeting law, right? So right. the question is, I don't think there is a question about that. You give just an extra layer of accessibility. Those who have the time and the disposable time to be able to come to the chambers, absolutely. But you still keep that accessibility uh, of who cannot make it, who you know doesn't have transportation, have kids at home, to be able to turn in and be able to, to still do public speaking through, uh, you know, uh, a video conference platform such as Zoom, Microsoft Teams, or uh, Google Meets, right? Mm -hmm. Excellent. And, then, and also, like, there was a lot of amazing feedback. You know, people were like, go into the communities, the underserved communities, you know, go in and talk to people, go be with these people, you know, because, um, you know, there's a lot of stigma. Um, I think attached to, you know, some of the low income areas in Northampton. And I think people have preconceptions about what it's like to come into the neighborhoods. Um, and then also, I think, um, you know, I, I definitely feel like, wow, you know, a, a maximum of, of these responses come from non-working people, people who have retired, you know, um, having been a single parent for a while, there's no way that I could have, you know, had time or even thought about civics, civil service, um, you know, when my kids were younger. And, you know, sometimes, I mean, it's better now that they're older, but, you know, certainly, I mean, I was working like 16 hours a day when my kids were growing up. I mean, it was, it was, it was uh, commuting. It was getting to the jobs in Boston. It was, coming home and cooking dinner and doing laundry, making sure that everybody had their pajamas on and brush their teeth and putting people to bed and going to bed and getting up at 4.30 a.m. and doing the same thing with a four hour commute <laughs> minimum per day. On each, on each end, it was a couple hours. So, you know, it's it's not quite like that out here in Western Massachusetts, but I know that's certainly the way it it, it was for me as a single mom until I got out here to Western Massachusetts. So those are some of my thoughts. Um, some other things that I read was mentoring. And then at the same tune, I saw people commenting that they wished that they were more qualified people and that they weren't just being sent over to the committees and not knowing what to do. So it was kind of an interesting thing, you know. Um, you know, I mean, uh, civil service is, you know, it's it should always be there, you know, I mean, you know, we take the state ethics exam um, before we take the oaths. Um, we're taught about open meeting law. Um, but in terms of like the missions of the individual, you know, we just we just need more information, I think. Yeah, excellent. Thank you so much. Um, I saw Garrick and Cynthia. Which one would, um, Garrick? <laughs> either one Cynthia do you want to go first okay um yeah so I, I I will admit I still need to parse through some of this information there's a lot of stuff there so I, I went and tried to really narrow down on some things um I think one thing that really stood out to me was the the question of considering applying for another board and it was resoundingly a yes so despite there being some issues, at least, you know, obviously we have a captive audience uh, with the people that we reached out to, but I thought that that was at least a good sign. Um, as Gwen said, there are a couple of things that shine through, which I think are going to be things we've already talked about, um, which is, you know, having a on onboarding, you know, um, more information about the process. There's a lot of talk about uh, responding to applicants, which we've already kind of identified as an issue. Um, and then and then a big one was social awareness, like coming up with ways to put things out. So um, I, I think that 
you know, obviously we need a bigger and, and we're going to talk about how to get this survey out to more people, but it's really seeming clear that some of the issues we've already identified are the ones that uh, we really need to, to kind of focus in with the laser precision. And, and I think that some people had some really solid ideas of things that, you know, there was a couple, you know, thoughts about having an HR person or someone to respond to, to some of these things. Uh, I thought that was something I had not thought about. Um, obviously, that means that we'd have to hire someone, but um, yeah, I, I found it very interesting. So thanks for sending that along. Um, and as I parse through it more, I think I'll, I'll find some more more interesting things. I did think the the fact that there were more women serving was very interesting as well. So, but as a as a father of, of two ladies and living in an all female household, you know, girls run the world, as Beyonce said. Excellent. Um, Cynthia? Um, yeah, I think along the same lines, I actually thought the response was a very good response statistically for surveys like this, um, but I would totally support um, casting another net out there. Um, I'm not sure what the, if there was ever a deadline assigned to that first um, group, um, no. but either way. Um, sometimes that's helpful. Um, I, I was particularly struck about um, uh, two things. How did you how did you hear about it? And there's a range of you know some of us are city geeks, right? I mean we're we're kind of like interested in what's happening, so we will will navigate that website and. Um, but the ones that were particularly interesting were the ones that you know, said, well, I, my counselor contacted me or I read my ward newsletter, um, which I think is some counselors do that, some don't, different ways of communicating with constituents. Um, and so that's a, that's a true opportunity. Um, but exploring the ways to, first of all, let people know about it and let people know that there is a, uh, a potential you could get this gig. <laughs> so I have a question for you about that, because this is something that uh, in our meeting with Jamila, we it, literally we were talking about this. And what 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 we thought is that if you add that's question number one, right? Uh, how did you find out about the vacancy on the board in which you serve or apply to serve, right? Um, if you take a look. Over 50% were answers where you need to know somebody. You need to know a city council member, you need to have a relationship because you are, are approached, or you know the mayor, so the mayor is contacting you or somebody else is contacting you. So it's about, it's about knowing somebody, right? Knowing somebody that it's connected or it's uh, sort of informed. Um, our analysis with, with Jamila, and Jamila, if you're okay with me saying this, it's we need to get higher those points where anybody can access the information, notwithstanding who they know or they don't know, right? Not only uh, because we're talking about, uh, so the two where I read about the opening via the media, social print radio newsletter, I read about the opening on the city of Northampton website. Um, I think the challenge for us is gonna is gonna is gonna be able to sort of to formulate this that and and maybe I'm hearing this in what you're saying, if not correct me, that we need to our recommendation has to be that the city should strengthen those communication styles that doesn't depend who you know. And on top of that, they should create more communication uh, ways to not only social media and the website, but things that people are gonna know, right? And it's not gonna be that you are close with a city councilor. And I mean, I have to say, I had sort of running to that, right? I Because of the work that I do. Uh, but I, I think that that was at least Jamila and myself reading of the first one that was heavily into who you know and who is part of the network that you know. Right, I agree. And so hence proximity. Um... So, you know, it's, it's really, um, I think what happens is, you know, it's not a big city, 
Um, you know, we don't have a big, big city, but, um, you know, I was thinking, you know, it's how interesting it was, um, as Cynthia is saying that, and as you guys are talking about, like, you know, it creates an imbalance because what it means is people who have the privilege to be serving are communicating with each other. And then people who are really busy working or in, they're in that bracket where the decisions that are being made are really important for them because that's sometimes decisions and changes that are made in the city could impact, you know, a certain group of people the most, you know, and yet they have the least amount of representation. Um, and then um, also just, you know, yes, we are predominantly a white community, um, but given the extremely small, I think the reparations committee said 2% of African-Americans who are living in Northampton right now, that does, I don't think that included Latinas or indigenous people, people of mixed race is very, very small. And so um, it's, and I don't know, I don't know what the solution is like, I. I think back to like when I was like a working single mom and I just don't know how I could have been attending meetings, you know, especially like, you know, putting the kids in the car, you know, or getting a sitter, you know, or like even just dealing with like getting to a meeting at 530 or, you know, various times that they have these meetings, you know, there were different times. So like, you know, there were some meetings that are at 5.30 in the afternoon. I mean, who's even home from work by then? You know, it's it's like you just kind of come booming through the door, you know, if you work nine to five. <laughs> if you have the privilege to work nine to five, you might make a 5.30 meeting. Um, and so that means that the people I'm thinking of, like, uh, you know, especially the housing, the housing meetings, uh, even Northampton um, Housing Partnership, and um, and also uh, the housing authority meetings happen at 5.30 in the afternoon. Um, there's pretty slim chance of people coming to those meetings who are working um, at Dunkin' Donuts or Kentucky Fried Chicken or, you know, even working in a service job, you know, home care workers. Um, yeah, so I would love to make that better somehow. I I would love to somehow see that. I mean, I mean, the, the beautiful thing is that I think that the the survey tends to point in that direction, right? Right. So, Cynthia, is there any 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 addition that you want to sort of? You want to uh, add anything? Yeah, the, the other point that I, I wanted to, that I found interesting was um, the chairs, uh, kind of a range of, yeah, I don't really have much input in, in, in who's going to be on my commission council. And I'm not putting a value on that as much as, um, you know, depending on what the commission is or the board or the advisory group, and, and those are three different kind of entities. Um, shouldn't the chair have an impact? You know, shouldn't the chair be asked? Shouldn't the chair feel comfortable um, saying, hey, can I look at the applications? I, I don't know. I don't know what's appropriate or inappropriate. Um, but that's another opportunity. And, um, and, and I found that, that those responses to be pretty interesting. So they just sort of wait for an application to come through. And I know in one committee or commission that I was doing some work with, they said, well, we, ha we had to cancel our last couple meetings because we didn't have a quorum. So what does that mean, right, for the city? Does that mean all business stops? Um, does that mean, you know, we just accept that that's the way it is? And I know that's one of the reasons for this committee, but that's a little alarming and, um, and, and some of my friends, you know, when they say, hey, what are you up to? I say, I'm doing this committee thing. And they're like, yeah, how, how are people supposed to know about that? How, you know, and these are people that are right. 
reading the paper, doing social media, and they're just like, or or it could be something that they just see that is just not interesting to them, <laughs> you know. And so it's about um, it's about characterizing city service, maybe in a different way. It, and and that's that's the long game. I get it. <laughs> but um, the fact that we have so many vacancies um, and the representation is, as you all have said, sort of leaning toward one demographic. Um, so this is a, um, I think all we can do, obviously, is make the best recommendations that we can. Um, and I think of a, a commission, like I think the city council is going to vote on the um, commission to study racism in the city. So Yes. Um, how how does how do those individuals get selected or tapped, or right. you know because there's a goal to have a balance there, right? And so just just knowing how some of these things happen. I mean, Javier Javier and I were on the police commission. I don't know your story, Javier, but I apply, right? <laughs> And so that was a firm application. And so the way I understand it is that the city council got to pick six people and the mayor got to pick six. I may have the wrong numbers there. Mm. And so how does that all happen, right? Um, so it's, I'm, I think I've said before, I'm sort of about transparency and it would be good to know. Yes. Do you, do you feel, Cynthia, that because while you were talking, I was checking that section about the chairs and the level of involvement. And certainly there is a trend about transparency, clarity, and involvement that we're seeing that there is there is certainly people wanting to know more, <laughs> to be informed when something is gonna happen in their own committees and to have a, a say or at least input in the process, right? Um, Jamila, I want to sort of go to you. I know that uh, we talk a little bit about this, but I think you know there's a, there's a lot to say about the the the, the survey. Yeah, I I think that you know the thing about the chairs. I think that it should be part of our recommendation. I think to bring in the chairs more into the process. Um, and I think that's something that could be relatively easy for a city council to do, for the city services to do. Um, a thing about the survey that stood out for me um, was what we've been talking about with Megan, which is like the onboarding and also people saying that they have feelings of like ineffectiveness and not making a difference. I don't know what the percentage was on that, but it was pretty high, um, as I can see. It was so like was, 20, 27, 28%. Yeah, I was surprised yeah. by that. And I, I don't know how attractive these commissions and committees can be to people if they feel like they're not making an impact. Um, that's, that's one thing that I, I'd be concerned about is, you know, how how much of an impact do people feel like they're making? So I think I think uh, those are good points, and I think that they go hand in hand. Um, giving people and and people said this in the survey is having realistic goals and expectations, um, and knowing what you can cannot do will go a long way to you feeling like you're effective. Um, I think someone wrote in the survey that you know they just didn't know how the process works you know because everyone comes in like i'm going to make a change but they don't realize that you just can't make money magically appear or you can't do these things as processes um so and, know, and, I, and, and i think that's that's important right i mean two things the first one is so i'm serving right now on the compensation uh advisory board to the mayor right yeah which affects you know two of the members present here <laughs> <laughs> and 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 in some point there were conversations among the members saying, you know, we have to be cognizant of the budget. My answer was the charge is to take a look how much you guys are making, how much do you feel that you're actually putting in hours, 
how much do you think you need you would need to put in hours to actually make it meaningful and impactful and be good in what you do and how to build a bridge my my role on that committee is not to think oh the budget so my recommendation has to no 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 that's not my charge right my charge is to is to figure it out and so far based in all this research that i have been doing well and also the work that i do with aclu you guys are incredibly underpaid like massively underpaid right you and uh, of course you're not competing with city council member in, in, in Greenfield that is making $2,000 a year with, uh, before taxes, by the way, and without benefits. But the reality is that, because you know, the, the, one idea that one of the members uh, start talking about is, oh, you know, let's take a look to how much money other city council in surrounding neighborhood cities are making and let's shoot for the middle. From my point of view, that logic is fail because you are assuming that everybody's being compensated in a good way, which they are not. So I agree that people need to understand the, 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 the nature of the charge for better and for worse. For better, understanding that their charge, it's not limited to budget, it's not limited to X, Y, and Z, but it, it is limited from the point of view that not a lot of, a lot of people go into this thinking that we're gonna make a recommendation, the city's gonna do it. That's not the case. And a lot right. of people that fill out the form, the survey, and a lot of people that we have been talking, I are saying it's extremely frustrating to put six, eight, a year of work for our recommendations that we just, you know, throw to the corporate dream. It's like, well, do you thought, and you know, follow up question, do you, do you think that you, the recommendation we're gonna be thinking? Say, yes, of course, we're working really hard on that or sort of similar but different when with uh, when Cynthia was served on the Northampton Police Review Commission, the recommendations were a little hijacked and misrepresented. So that can also turn off people of, hold on, we recommended this, but now mm -hmm. I'm hearing you that you're saying that, no, they recommended something else. And <laughs> it's like, right. What, what's going on with it? So I think having clear rules, uh, do and don'ts, and what's going to happen and what may not happen makes absolute sense. Because also you have to manage expectations. And I think that's expectation is where a lot of people get frustrated, right? Right. Excellent. So one of the things that I want to do this, this meeting, I want to go... Um, and take a look to the demographic section. Um, and the I, reason why, uh, when? I just wanted to go back for a minute to the, um, the chairs. Sure. I mean, my understanding is that the role of the chair is to essentially set up the meeting times, send out the agenda, take care of the agenda and that. Um, but, I would think that the city council who are representing each ward um, would know who should be sent to the various boards and committees and would consider that because, um, you know, I'm thinking back, like there's a huge amount of people serving from ward five. And then I forget which ward was the least. I, I might be wrong, but I'm gonna guess ward one. <laughs> um, no, I think Garrett. It may be three, I don't remember. I can't hear you, Garrick. I think it was like ward six was the lowest. Okay. Followed by my ward. Right, Same and one. so like, I think to myself, like we wanna, we wanna listen to the silence too, you know, so. Okay, sorry, that's it. No, no, that, that's okay. I mean, I think the mindset based on the survey is that we need to decentralize who, who gets to know the information. Okay, yeah. Right? Decentralize, yeah. Um, because, you know, when we start talking about having counselors making recommendations, uh, 
those recommendations may be really good, may not, but either for better or worse are full of bias. And one of the things that that kind of action sort of precludes the city is to have diverse voices. And the voices of those that may not be agreeable to those appointing or calling on letting others know about uh, positions may ignore delivered information or may ignore the, the applications. There are a couple of people that, that answer in sort of in that line. So that's yeah. the reason why I think the healthier pathway for me, it's, 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 it's to advocate for decentralization of information that doesn't really depend who you know or you don't know to be able to access information mm -hmm. and, and hope for the best. <laughs> Cynthia. Just a clarification question. Do the counselors know the wards as I understand them are not demarcated by population. It's more about territory. So that in fact, ward one could have more density right then ward six i i just don't know does anyone know well when you're when you're doing redistricting or districting you are cutting through uh residential zones to make sort of as 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 equivalent as you can as okay as you can that that's the goal that doesn't mean that it's achieved uh and you know, I, I had my thoughts about the redistricting uh, districting, yeah. Form, but uh, but yes, in redistricting, what you're trying to do is to, you know, if you're really thoughtful, you start thinking about uh, minority majority districts. Right. Yeah. Um, you you're cognizant that you don't want to divide this neighborhood because it's the only neighborhood of people of color, or if you are leaving some section out of a neighborhood that doesn't make any sense because you know there is a senior living complex and you want them closer to the voting so there is a lot of uh things in mind but the first one should always be proportionality agreed i mean i'm, I'm saying this only as the as the the goal of districting and redistricting i haven't seen the numbers of front or hampton i have to say that my understanding is that they're all pretty equal. They're within okay. a couple of people. They're, and, you know, and one of the reasons why some words are bigger than others is because of that, right? Because you are covering yeah. that sort of racial majority's word. It has a full section with a lot yeah. of words, a lot of, re, uh, so they have to expand it more out to be able to sort of have the amount of people that they need. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Cool. Right. So, um, I, I want to go to the demographic question, and we're gonna we're gonna start, and I'm gonna share my screen. I know that this is way too little for the members to read, so if you guys want to just open your copy of it, that would be fine. I wouldn't feel offended. Um, so we're we're talking about demographics, right? And and yes, we're seeing that. Vastly, women uh, out of the 115 answers that we got, 53.98 percent are the ones serving. I'm not necessarily surprised. Uh, so there is a trend in in nonprofits and in sort of more uh, direct service, right? Uh, illegal direct service that it's it's vastly more women. Mm -hmm. I don't know if there's a correlation. I may be able sort of to, to see it a little bit. Uh, the males, uh, 34.51. Um, I think there is one transgender woman, uh, non-binary five, uh, non-binary uh, gender queer five, prefer not to say two, and uh, self-described two prefer not to say five. Um, and one of the reasons why I'm, I, I wanna see this is, so if we go to the next one, which we're talking about age, this is something that really was worrisome for me. Um, we're talking about, you know, 60 something percent of people is over 
you know, 45 going all the way to 65 and plus. And between 18 and 44, not even talking about, I mean, not even talking about between 25 and 34, which we have 7% of people serving, right? I mean, it's, 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 the amount is really, really tiny. And 65 plus, it's, you know, uh, 32.74, 54 is between 55 and 64 is 23.01. And the correlation that we're going to see with that comes later when we're talking about, uh, well, ethnic background. That's something that uh, when you mentioned on this, it's over, overwhelmingly, I mean, 85.59% white. Um, right. Almost uh, nine percent said that they don't want to. They prefer not to say. So it's it's it's. I mean, this is sort of confirming things that we knew. Um, these are the words. So majority from word five. After that, one. After that, two, three, four. Last one, six. Um, seven right behind two. Um, uh, over, overwhelmingly amount of people are married of the ones. Yeah, I thought that was interesting as well. Six, you know, three, so what does that two. mean? You know, like, okay, married woman, married white woman. So um, if, you, if you take a look when to the, to the main body of the survey, you're going to see that um, the times that somebody's saying that childcare was an issue, it's really low. It's really, Very low. really, really low. So the fact that we have an overwhelmingly white population that most of them are married, they may have, you know, that one of the partners may be looking after the kids at that point. Um, but also, I think uh, it's the next one. When we're talking about we're gonna see this one, which is what's your employment status. And this one, I wanna attach it to the, to the compensation, like the salary, right? We have a 43.24% full-time. And the ones that uh, are interesting for me, which is huge, is other, please specify 36.04. The vast majority of the people that uh, chose other uh, especially by retirees. The vast by majority what? of the people retired, right? Oh, yeah. Of the, over, of the 36.04%, right? And if you put those two together and all of a sudden we're talking about household income, and I want to go back to disability, but household income, this is just my mind exploded yeah. this is for for me and this is really where, where i'm running we're seeing demographics right now because i think there is a correlation for us to understand uh the people that are answering this survey before going into the questions right i think it's really in in as an as a sort of an exercise i would invite the members to take a look to the demographics first take a look and have a sense a general sense of who is filling out our survey and then going into the meat of the survey, because I think that's pretty telling. Right. Um, you know, um, between 50,000 50, and 100,000, 31.82%. Between 100,000 and 200,000, thir a third of the people serving. That's right. More than 200,000, 7.27%. I don't even want to think about the ones that prefer not to say. Uh, God knows. Mm -hmm. I, I may have assumptions. Uh, less than 25,000, 7.27. And between 25 and 52.73. This is bad. <laughs> I'm this, sorry. It's... This is Yeah, bad. I mean, I... I'm so glad you said that first. Um, it's rough. It's rough. It's really rough. Um, this but is about yet, it didn't surprise me. 
I know. <laughs> Which really <laughs> bums me out. I yeah, it's it's not surprising. And, yeah. and 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 when this is, I don't know if you remember when months ago we talk about this in one of our conversations um the fact that um and 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 i think this is uh, this shows a couple of things right uh, with when we were talking about the house and time city confounds uh low-income housing with affordable housing right and right. how the use the you said interchangeable which is not, not interchangeable. interchangeable by a long stretch and 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 they, but the way how the city uses many times or how people think about affordable housing as oh that's 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 anybody can pay yeah the affordable housing two hundred and fifty thousand dollars house so but look at median income yes yes right so in thinking about that and seeing the median income it's pretty telling and it's, i mean do we know what what the we what is the median income? I I don't know what it is most recently, um, but I know I, that there are a lot of programs that are based off of median income. Like for example, Habitat for Humanity yeah. is going to set an amount. You know, it'll be different in Boston than it is out here. Um, you know, no wonder why we don't get a lot of state funding. It looks like we have a lot of money out here. Yeah, and 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 when as an answer for medium income, I do not remember the exact number, but this conversation came out from because the other uh, advisory board that I work with, it's thinking about their own survey. And this was one of the questions, and I think Sam Hopper, um, who's incredible, she came out. She was able to find pretty quickly the medium income. But the reality is that, and I don't remember the number, and the number was like, oh, okay, was not surprising for good or bad. But the reality is that the amount of uh, people with m a lot of money in the city mm -hmm. would, would, would create a misleading medium income in the city. Right. Um, and even more in a, in a small size city such as Northampton that has extremely wealthy people. Right. Right. Um, and that, and that, so the median income uh, that would be sort of would be different in in a bigger size sample such as Springfield, Wester, Hartford, or even, uh, you know, Lawrence Lowell, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I would, and that's the reason for me that this data point is way more important, right? And and all of a sudden we're understanding that middle so sort of upper middle class people, prominently white are the ones vastly more, uh, spending more time serving. Mm -hmm. uh, high rate of women, lesser rate of men. Um, and also uh, we go here with about disability. So we have, um, you know, if you have a disability, 24% said yes, 71.43 uh, said no. And 7.14 said, prefer not to say, right? Mm -hmm. um, I would say that, being honest with you, I do think that disability requires, I think they, they should, you know, we have a disability commission in the city. I think it, it is, it would be beautiful if they conduct a survey in relation to this and, 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 and you know, and, and specifically about the limitations of people with disability to be able to serve. Yeah. I think that's that that I think that's a project by itself and maybe a necessary project. Um, any I questions agree so far? with that. Yes. Any questions so far? Um, I wonder about. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Uh, Cynthia, Gary, and after that, when? Um, I was just um, trying to um, balance. The demographics to this point with with the next slide, which talks about overwhelmingly, overwhelmingly members do not have dependents. Yes. <laughs> okay. Right. So um I'm and and I'm not sure how a parent, when they get that question, do you have dependents? And you have kids, but maybe they're out of the house, you know, like do you say zero? Oh. I, I it's hard to know. How people interpret that but that's just kind of um i mean that tells me the the sort of 
white retired higher income folks are the ones that are kind of dominating yeah, yeah. and also uh, um oh, sorry <laughs> you know we have an explosion of boomers who need health care workers who are going to start taking care of them as they age and so this is really a kind of a scary thing um yeah. yeah i mean you can't get people to help you live your life if um people can't afford to be where you are so um yeah it's this is this is this is pretty it's really telling gary yeah so <clears throat> I, I think a lot of our observations are you know on point straight there what cynthia said i was going to point out too the the dependence um aspect but i really thought what was, what was interesting in the demographics was the um the age i know you already talked about that javier but the, the one that really gets me is the 18 to 24. you know gwen has talked about when you're single mom and you're doing things you know there's there's a period in life where you're just kind of busy that's why a lot of people who serve tend to be retirees or in a portion of their life where they've lived and done some things but I, but i think um you know, because I'm, I'm just trying to think forward, you know, because our, our task is to come up with recommendations. And I think some youth outreach is, is glaring. In, I into, agree. Because once you get people to start serving in some of these smaller commissions, I think then you have them kind of hooked in, you know, and it goes back to the knowing aspect of it. Um, you know, if you, if you get people in, in their 19 and 20 year olds uh, to be a part of the, you know, the, the, the city and helping to better the city, I think you're going to have more engagement and they're, in my opinion, better at communicating and reaching out uh, as, as, as in the older portion of this demographics graph, I know that I still uh, struggle with, with reaching the youth. And I do consider myself kind of hip to the times, like, you know, going out in the nightclub hey. and stuff, but I still, you know, my kids are out here on TikTok and I'm like, show me how to do what you just did. Right. I, I love the hip to the time. I, 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 I love that. When? Oh, you know, I mean, I agree with what Garrick just said. And, you know, I'm just thinking about my own kids and also what Cynthia just said. You know, there was no way to put into this dependent situation like, well, you know, legally, you know, I don't have little kids, but I do have young adults who depend on me who are going through college or have have challenges in life and need help sometimes and so there really wasn't a space for that um but reaching the younger people you know i mean it's hard it's hard right and so like how can we how can we do that because you know even reaching like my youngest daughter is who i'm thinking about right now and she's like oh my god you're so political she's like i gotta go you know and i'm just like no no listen you know just trying to get her to listen but she's she's busy having her social life she hasn't been damaged enough in life yet i guess you know it's just you know she's not jaded yet so she wants to go live her life and and i i don't know i i have so many different thoughts about it but yeah in, 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 in you know in 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 politics you always talk about what do you do with age with uh college age people right, right. because they, they got, they, there is a movable demographic they are a transient demographic yeah how do you get them involved how much of the percentage they stay around an area like you know we have the four and a half colleges and how, how do you how do you manage that right and i think that also speaks a lot and and also i <laughs> gary what you just said uh reminded me when me and my wife we went to we wanna we went to the the opening season of the boston symphony orchestra and they have a discount for youth that it started and you were able to access that all the way to 40 years old so I would say we can do better the, the Boston Symphony Orchestra youth program for people in this count right. and, and bring that age really 18 to 24, I think is really, really, really important. I agree. So the next data point, I oh, know, sorry, Jamila. Oh, and I was just going to add that a lot of people, I feel like a lot of people that go to school here, <laughs> stick, they stick around here. So they would be interested in continuing on to 
you know, help better the city as they stick around after college. I agree with that. Um, you know, and also I'm thinking about a recent documentary series that I saw on Northampton Open Media. I mean, it was great. It was great the kids were doing this. Um, they went around, they talked to people on the street, just everyday people, you know. Um, how can we keep them engaged like that? Like, to me, that's a really fun project. So, you know. So, and the last question, what's your primary language? It's 100% English. Yeah. Uh, there, there is one person that says English, but I speak Spanish, well, primary language English. Uh, as you can see, I did not fill out this form because you, I would I would have been the 0.01%, like primary language different. Mm -hmm. uh, so now I'm gonna I'm gonna stop sharing my screen because I, I really and honestly think that after we we I have in my head sort of a, a sort of a different types of people based in, in our in our demographic survey, right? And I think that the the, the, the invitation to, to the members is now to take a look to the answers of, of the of the of the general survey from now the mindset of we sort of know who fill out all this this is the reason why we're getting because this is this is key to contextualize what we're seeing right um when again and i i know i said I repeat this a little bit. When I was serving on the Northampton Pollution Review Commission, I had a subcommittee with Alex Jarrett, Booker Bush, and Car uh, Carol Owen. And Carol Owen taught me a uh, 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 sort of a, 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 a phrase that she said, you know, false equivalency, which would be really interesting, right? And, and mm -hmm. false equivalency meant that because it didn't happen to me, probably didn't happen to other people, or if because I didn't have trouble with this specific group of enforcing police, probably, you know, they were really good with me, probably are good with everybody. Those are a false equivalency, assuming that just right. because of your lived experience, all the rest of the things are just the same for everybody, right? Exactly. If you think about false equivalency playing a role in how people conduct themselves, which it does, is part of sort of the implicit bias of each, each other, and what they bring to the table in city commissions and, 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 and advisory boards that are gonna affect the day to day of the city or recommendations, we are lacking heavily in diverse voices. In time. Heavily, heavily. <laughs> And we haven't even talked about the, 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 the narrative answers of people that they feel that they are being cited, um, which, is, which is terrible. I mean, it's, it's, I'm sort of putting things on a scale where I'm, there is so much that needs to change and so much that needs to happen, not only you know, with, with processes being more clear and transparent, but also with diversifying who gets to appoint people or at least diversifying yes. who this who is the gatekeeper that's to right who is going to serve or not um you talk about you know the aging the aging demographics the when of of that the service it's showing us in in and in, 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 as a as a, a parenthesis, I want to say we're not questioning necessarily the work that has been done by these members, right? Previous right. Uh, members and and actual members. What we're saying is that what is telling us, uh, the, it's it's not about the quality of the work, but it's telling us about the level of diversity and accessibility, or lack of 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 it that that is happening right now. That's right. Um, I made I'm I. I and I speak for myself, I made the mistake to go through the question without going to the demographics first. And after that, I went to the demographics and I said, you know, I'm gonna read it again. And all of a sudden I have this aha moment that, oh, shoot, this is, <laughs> this rings different when, <laughs> when you go through to the demographic because you have a sense of the, of the, of the, of the sort of a, predominant group that it's that it's sort of espousing what, what it's you know the gatherings of the survey um 
I, and I, I, so I want to open the floor sort of for general comments about, you know, if, if you think it's a good idea to demographics and after sort of reread or revisit the, the, the core of the survey, if you think it's, there's other ways, if you agree with me or if you don't agree with me, um, I'm more than open. Well, of course, I'm. <laughs> so, yes. I, I just think the results are so problematic that I just really want us to get do another net, cast the net again, as we say, you know, try to get more responses. You know, if if I could make it to any of these meetings, like even just any any meetings, um, you know, I do sometimes I drop into the school committee meeting or I drop into other meetings and, um, you know, I don't get there till late. So I, I can't, I can't like, um, you know, speak from the public, you know, I, I don't get there in time to make a public comment and say, I just want to remind everyone we have this survey out there. Um, but I can, I can try to make, you know, some of those at least to go, you know, verbally, you know, say it out loud. Yeah. Too. But I, I would like to, to push a little, I mean, I agree with that. Every single, every kind of outreach is good, but I think a hand, more than a hundred answers is a huge success. Yeah. It's a huge, it's, 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 it's a worth sample uh, of, for a survey. Well, well then I will confess that I was thinking to myself, could it possibly be so unbalanced um, with the number of those answers? And yes, yes, it looks like um, those are the demographics that we have. Um, there's a high tendency in this is there there's a high tendency and that was and the, and and i don't Cynthia, you were the one saying is there the results and so Cynthia was the one sort of reminding me to to start sending the results and i think it was a really good idea to do it because it's they are pretty telling um i want to sort of open the floor for other members to to reflect well, I, I find it telling, but again, I don't find it surprising. Um, you know, it, it, there are things that are of note, but really like we're in Northampton, let's, let's be honest here. Um, you know, there's, there's more women because statistically we actually have, I think 58, 60% female population in Northampton. Yeah. You know, so um, with that being said, I am looking forward to more data. I, I think sending out is good, but also, you know, we haven't done any of the public outreach stuff. We haven't really, right. like, I'm looking forward to getting some information from the nooks and crannies that have not been explored and, and probably won't be through just an email blast. Um, you know, I think the answers that I'm looking for are why are some of these populations not even showing up on the radar? You know, why? Um, my understanding is probably because of what people have already identified, which is outreach. You know, there is, um, you know, which is a cyclical thing. Like it's, it's hard to do outreach when there's no one designated to do that. You know, if, if, even if you have counselors or people put out newsletters, you're really only going to a certain demographic, which again is the, I think Cynthia said is the the city nerds, the, the political nerd people who right. follow uh, counselor blogs or things like that. Um, my hope is that, you know, we can, we can figure out ways to, to get into places where people who don't normally get reached, get reached, um, you know, what, which then, you know, thinking about it, like, it kind of be a fun experiment to set up it at a local establishment, like a tavern or you know, progression or something like that. And just right, have right, right. And, and leave out a survey and, and people could do that. So um, I, I know that's on our list. So I don't know if other people have stuff to say, but I would definitely, you know, as we're getting at 840, want to talk about what we want to do to get some outreach uh, and distribute this a little more. Yes. Um, yeah, let's see if there's anything else that members would like to sort of reflect. I, I think um, 
I think we we know this demographic problem, and um, I I. I I always have concern about because we when I think of actually individuals in the city who are black, we have a it's a two to three percent number as I understand it as I've read and correct me if I'm wrong, and um, so I'm just taking individuals who are black mm -hmm. and help me out Jamila and Garrick here because I don't want to be stepping on territory that's going to get me in trouble. Um, a committee that I'm on at Cooley Dickinson, um, one of my members of color said to me, stop leaning on me. Stop asking me to do this work. Everybody asks me to do this work because there's so, so few of us. Right. And, and so um, I was like, that. I was like, whoa. I thought you'd be happy if we, but I was wrong. I was so wrong. And so um, I just, um, um, the level of distrust of government is really at its highest level right now. And so we have that running against us. And, and, and um, in deference to the hard work that our counselors are doing, what do you see? Oh, that whole parking thing is going to be screwed up. Oh, geez, they can't figure out what to do with how many marijuana plants. You know, I mean, you get those sound bitey things. And so people are like, get, uh, get, get out of here. I'm not going to be able to make a difference. And they don't know the work that went behind and under, you know, getting, getting to these points where we make these decisions that in the Gazette or on Facebook appear to be crazy decisions, you know, and so... We're battling these things. We're battling the distrust of government. My taxes, what the hell am I getting for my taxes, right? You know, all that kind of rhetoric that you get in a city. And mm -hmm. so um, so what difference is it going to make for me to be on one of these commissions? Mm -hmm. And so we, we've got this two-prong approach here. It's not only the outreach to get people in, but the convincing that you are going to make a difference. Um, and, and so that, that just worries me. Um, and so I just, I just wanted to make those comments that if I'm on wrong ground, please call me out. I want to be no. called out. I mean, um, I think a lot of people feel that way about voting as well. They're like, oh, I'm not going to vote. You know, it won't make a difference. And yeah. yeah. And, and I, and I, so I so get it. I so get it. Cause there are times yeah. when I just want to like, get me out of here. Right. <laughs> um, but it's the people like yourselves that are here that are doing the making the sausage <laughs> policy and regulations is tough, tough work. And um, mm -hmm. there's a lot of debating that goes on in our city, in our town. And we have these, you know, these high income liberal progressives that feel, you know, whatever. Um, so it, it, we're on a and I just hope in our final report, we acknowledge the fact that, um, you know, maybe, maybe we got to change too, right? <laughs> Not only right. getting the word out there, but in terms of the responsiveness to our citizens, um, particularly citizens who just simply feel they do not have a voice. And I'm sorry, I'm just going to go back to the city council resolution that's now four years old that says we need, after George Floyd, we need to have an office that's devoted absolutely to minority affairs and we never we never established that office so right. that, that's as, baked that's baked in our history is this a declaration as, of the of it being a public health issue of, of it actually yeah, being a public yeah. health issue is so yeah. important so so we've got we've got a lot of work to do <laughs> and not that this commission holds all this this committee of ourselves holds all this right. i just want to be mindful of it that's why the white people are grav gravitating toward these jobs. That's why the high income people are gravitating toward these jobs <laughs> or these, these appointments, in my opinion. So please, please counter me if uh, um, this is just a you know, off the cuff opinion. All right. Yeah, I, what I would say it's, um, so we, we had a meeting with Jamila talking about how we were dividing the report. And the first section is contextualizing in our Hampton uh, reality, right? 
that what we're seeing not only because of the survey numbers, but also because of, of the census number, which you were yes. right, is between 2.6 and 3% African-Americans and 7% for Latino. Yeah, yeah. So yes, ab absolutely. We have been thinking about sort of building, a, so contextualize at the beginning. What, what I would say is, is two things, right? The first one is, um, goes to, it's, it's the chicken and the egg, right? So- And I wanna mention indigenous, um, sorry. Yeah, I mean, indigenous is, you know, 0.1 <laughs> in, in, the, in, 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 the, in, in the census, right? Right. In shows, you know, in general shows up zero, but it's 0.1. Uh, it's around like 40 people. So, you know, for uh, there are things that we can we can use to contextualize why we are moving these recommendations and what's happening in our health. But I, I do still feel that the core of the context is either people not selectively not knowing what's going on because they, they are not are embedded into the net, networks. And by then being sort of totally oblivious of it, uh, as when said, in, in the level of priority for people having to work and feed their families, this is not even number 20 in priorities. Mm -hmm. And also the fact that because of those networks are really sympathetic with uh, political opinions, social opinions, circles of friends, there, there, there is a, there is a sort of a, a group of people, as we can see because of the, uh, so the narrative section of the, of the survey, that may hold different, you know, opinions that are also being cited, right? And I think those three, we can talk about those groups as the groups as that, in the need of the decentralization of information, communication, and. And also the, the, for a transparent, you know, uh, process when people are getting selected and appointed, we talk a lot about uh, Cynthia. You you call it rightfully you call it rubber stamping. I agree with that, um, and and I have repeated this several times. And you know, when when the city council has by the charter, the city council has a vote, any vote, that vote has a responsibility embedded into it, right? That, that, that vote, it's, it's part of the check and balance of, of, the, of the government. So seeing sometimes uh, the rubber stamping, just, you know, the person moved to that point, so we just approve and, and move on. I, I think there is something to say about it, right? But at the same time, after talking with several council members about the amount of hours that they are already working, about, I mean, the amount of hours that a newsletter gets to be done, the amount of hours that they have to spend because they, they, they are expected to show up into events, or if people in our community are expecting them to show up to these rallies or to have an opinion about something. This is another thing for me to say, you know, oh, because we're doing so little, do something and like what more. I feel bad about it because I know that <laughs> they are really doing a ton of stuff. No. Right. So I'm so I'm coming to terms with that because I, I'm cognizant of it, not because of this committee, but for the work of the other committee and the interviews that I have done for the other committee. Um but I I'm glad that one of the things that the survey shows strongly is that our, our, our collective knowledge from the get-go of this select committee and the experiences and the things that we were talking were right on point. It, it also, I would say that maybe things were worse than what we thought, <laughs> at least for me, at least for me. I mean, I never thought about that demographic, I never thought about the income. Garrett. You can continue. <laughs> if uh, you yeah, no, yeah, yeah, I'm, it's fine. Um, so I wanted to say a couple things. Um, one is, is just to go back to the rubber stamping. I, I get it and I, I see it and 
I don't want to bristle at it too much, but I, you know, I've, I've been on the record saying that at least in my time with city services, I really relish the a chance to be a checks and balance um, through this committee. However, um, I have learned that there could be more transparency. Like I, I, I never even thought about learning who applied but didn't move to the next step. I think that kind of would be a, a cool thing to learn. Um, but again, I, I, I will, you know, tell you that I, I've spent. You know, and everybody I've ever interviewed, I spent 45 minutes to an hour with, which I think is a substantial amount of time. That is enough time to for me to talk about, you know, why this person is running, why, you know, why these things. And, and luckily, we do have a lot of great citizens who want to be engaged. But I do, you know, I, I still want to push back against the rubber stamping. I, I, I think that, again, this committee has proven that there are some steps we could improve. But characterizing it as that is, is kind of feels weird to me. Um, I mean, I, I get the effectiveness of it, but it's it's not my experience. Um, not to say that's not what other people do. Like I can't tell you. <laughs> I was kidding. Yeah, I can't tell you that everyone spends an hour chatting. I'm just a chatty Kathy. But um, but but going back to one of Cynthia's points, um, and you know, we we do have a small black population here, as as you know, Jamil and I are the second and third African Americans to serve on the city council. Um, there is a feeling that because there's so few, so many, you know, you get leaned on, answer the questions and do the things. And I, um, you know, even Jamila and I and, and Councilor Elkins, Marissa, were talking about if we make this committee for studying harms, racialized harms, what, and half of it has to be African Americans. You know, if you if you just think about it, only a few people come to mind, and and that gets to be a burden. The burden of representation, I think, is something we should uh, at least take note of, and in, in our recommendations, or figure out, um, you know, just to, or, or or suggest that we really need to look at it through that lens. Because I think that um, also Javier put it. You know, if 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 you change how people think of service, maybe that's better. But I think this is going to be a process that takes a while. You know, again, we're the second and third African Americans, it, representation matters, and seeing Black people in the council hopefully will inspire more Black people. But you know, it, it all of these things do take a bit, um, and, and that, goes, that goes for every other minority, whether it's you know Indigenous people, whether it, it's our Asian American population, um, Vietnamese. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but, I there, know. There is, but that is that is something that that really you know a lot of people it's it, it is hard to be a minority in a in a majority white community and and every day a lot of our minority populations are dealing with the you know going to the store being the only you know black person out of twenty five or, or something like that you know like th these are things that um, I think influence people's decision whether or not they want to serve publicly because going True. out. In like is a whole experience for a lot of minorities putting yeah. putting themselves on the line that's right in the also, in the line yeah and also it's complicated isn't it because um all of a sudden you are the brown voice of the people in a white committee or you are the black or you're speak for all the black people just speaks for all the brown people in the committee and that's <laughs> that's bad and that's yeah that is kind of bad so um, so I'm going to be thoughtful. We had five minutes. So in relationship to, um, I would like to, so we have to have a, 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 a public speaking event. Um, it's February 14th. Our charge ends in April 15. I would say I would like to shoot for the second of the third week of March for the speaking, for one speaking event, because we don't have enough time for more. And maybe I would say either March 4 or March 11. Maybe March 11, because we are already in the uh, March, in the middle, in the mid of February. Is that regular meeting time, um, Javier? Uh, say it again. Is that regular meeting time? No, no, no. It's, it's, uh, it's uh, either if we do, if we do the, hold on, if we, where we are, I'll get here. If we do either the 11th or the 12th, it's, it's a Sunday or a Saturday. 
Oh, I see. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah, I wanna I wanna do it in a time and a day that uh, there is way more possibility for people to show up. Um, there's always going to be somebody that is not going to be able to make it, but we, you know, try to do it as much as we can. Um, so what, what do you think? And I'm, I'm speaking to every one of you, um, either the March, I would say March 11 or 12th. And the 12th is start day, daylight saving time, which is going to be beautiful. So, Gary? I, I think that that's good for me. The things that I would think about doing, I don't know if anyone like we would need a, a graphic designer, someone to come up with a flyer to before we have this event to put it out. Okay. I, I have a friend who is a master in Canva. Okay. I didn't, I didn't okay. know that they were giving out masters in Canva, but it is 2023 right now. Um, <laughs> you, know, you, you, can, you can go and have a sort of Star Trek class in college, so you know. <laughs> um yeah so so I, so I would think about trying to trying to roll out some of that stuff like okay. getting those, those things before our next meeting excellent so um i i i'm gonna ask and we can you can raise your hand so it's okay, sunday uh march 12th good for people yeah yes sunday march 12th um okay. 7 30 uh probably we're gonna do midday midday Okay. Yeah, because we're trying to do a, a different time than our regular meeting. So probably it's going to be midday, if, if, either 12 or 1, but we, that's something else. Okay. Um, excellent. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to circulate sort of a, you know, there's a, a regular language for a can uh, that I'm going to ask my friend to uh, create a Canva flyer for this. Um, and we're going to put it out. And if, um, Cynthia and Gary, if you guys can in your in your free time just think about uh outreach. Uh Gary, if you want to go to different radio shows with Cynthia, that would be incredible. Um, I'm gonna be really intentional. I'm gonna work with Jim going to the Salvo House to talk about this this event in you know um, the different neighborhood association too. Um so I think that's that's sort of the point. But I think that if we put a deadline, which in this case is the the day of the event, we're gonna start pushing and getting things done. Is that correct for everybody? That's that sounds well. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. Um, just just a reminder, I did send out that communication plan. Excellent. I'm gonna can can you resend it, Cynthia, just in case for us to have it on top? Yeah. So if um. It's, it's appropriate then for me to send it to Laura who would distribute it, right? I can't send it all. I just want to make sure. You can send it to all as long as nobody replies all. Yeah. <laughs> but okay. yeah, send, no, send it send it to Laura, just in case, send it to Laura and Laura can distribute it. Well, uh, you rem I think you remember it, don't you, Laura? I do, actually, I probably have it in my inbox, so. Okay. Okay, so um, perfect. And if anybody has a comment, just let me know. Uh, but we have a plan. Uh, the idea is to, ha to have this event. We're going to have more than probably 80% of the report written by then. So there is a, probably there's going to be just a section about the public event, depending how big or not it is. But at least 80% of the report should be already done in, in, a, in a copy circulating among members. And just to remind you, uh, when we start working, when me and Jamila are presenting sort of the first draft, we can only work as, as a committee with, like, with everybody present here in the meeting. When we're outside the meeting, you guys can do personal changes in your free time, not communicating with anybody. And after okay. that next meeting, you can show this is what I changed, blah, 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 but not collaboration with the document outside the, the meeting. Okay. Um, say that again. Explain that again, Javier. So when 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 a committee or board works in a report, that that the the, the, the collaborative part should happen during the meeting. Okay. Right? Yeah. So 
when with Jamila, we're gonna draft the first draft and then we're gonna present it to the committee for comments, changes, and that's the living document. Okay. We can do, we can, when, while we are working here, with either Jamila or myself, we're gonna share up a screen, we're gonna sort of live edit. Okay. When we're done with the meeting, we cannot work collaboratively the document. I can go back to my house and work in my computer with my copy, making changes, highlighting changes, saying in the next meeting, I can come and tell you, I did these changes, what do you think? Oh, I can okay. help work outside the meeting in a collaborative way with other members in a document. I cannot do that because that would be violating the open meeting law, okay? Okay, yeah, yep, yep, yep. Excellent. But Javier, in the in this context, though, I just want to um, assure, be assured, that um, as a member of this committee, I will be able to see the complete draft prior to its submission. Yes, of course. Um, of course. I just want to make sure that so, um, that that's going to happen. Yeah, so I ex I explain myself wrong. So by the time <laughs> we and Jamila have the first draft, you're gonna get it ahead of time of the first meeting that we're going to have ahead of time yeah right? so we're gonna and just ahead top probably we're gonna start, we're gonna depending how we're with time we're gonna start we may have to schedule consecutive meetings uh that that may be a need uh but i, I just want to give you a heads up okay okay perfect uh Excellent. So I'll, uh, this was really good. I appreciate everybody. I appreciate your work. Remember to take a look now that we talk, we talk deeply into demographics, go back to the survey. And, and, and I'm pretty sure if you went over the survey, if you go back after the world that we did today, you're going to see it with different eyes. Uh, so I'm looking for a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. I'm looking for a second. When? Excellent. Laura. Javier. Yes. Jamila. Yes. Gwen. Yes. Eric. Yes. And Cynthia. Uh, yes.